Hi, this is Matt. This is Mental Model Monday number 19. Today we're going to talk about Mind Lines, which is an NLP model developed by L. Michael Hall, and it's adapted from the Sleight of Mouth model and has added some additional nuance and understandings of how reframing works. So Mind Lines is a systematic tool for reframing meaning. What reframing means is that you can take the facts of the situation and you can reinterpret them to have different meanings. So you can imagine if you had a picture uh, in a fancy frame in a museum, it might have a different meaning for you than if that same picture was uh, stuck up with a thumbtack on uh, a wall in a dumpy apartment. Again, same facts, same picture, different frame around the facts, therefore different meaning to you. And uh, this mind lines is really a tool to create meanings that are empowering for you or the people you're talking to. And uh, oftentimes we can become unempowered with the meaning we create. And again, without changing the facts at all, we can reinterpret those facts in a meaning that's more empowering and useful for us. Remember, all, all models are false some models are useful. So what this does is it takes a false model you already, you already have and it makes it more useful for you. So uh, there is a particular structure in this model. There's a particular structure of how humans make meaning. And that is external behavior means internal state. So the external behavior are uh, something out there, some, some facts, some uh, some actual real life thing means internal state, something in me, something, uh, something that, that doesn't have a meaning outside of myself, some metaphor, some, uh, feeling, some, something like that. So an example of this would be, uh, you yelling at me means I'm a bad person. Uh, so, so, uh, or my parents yelling at me means I'm a bad person. That would be a good example. Uh, it's, it's, there's some meaning we're created there in one of three different ways. So that means, uh, can actually, the external behavior means internal state. That part that says means breaks down into three separate categories. First is cause and effect. So, uh, when I get yelled at, it causes me to get angry. Uh, so the, the effect is angriness, the cause is uh, yelling and the and the means is saying it causes and so this is how the external behavior is related to the internal state is cause and effects the second one is identification we already talked about this so uh getting yelled at means i'm a bad person it means something about me uh it's some identity or uh self-concept relation something out here relates to some fact or uh trait of myself. And the final type of meaning we make is a complex equivalence. Uh, this is when uh, cause and effect or identification happens so much that we no longer make the distinction in our mind. Uh, so they yell uh, means they are angry. They are angry. Uh, there's just a complex equivalence there. Yelling means angriness. There's no, uh, oh, that, that, that uh, their anger causes them to yell. Uh, it's just they are angry when they yell. And that's the third type of uh, meaning we do. So again, there's cause and effect, identification, complex equivalence. Um, and there's actually questions you can do to get people to state their, uh, the things they're saying into these categories. But I'm not going to get into that. The thing you need to know is that in order to start reframing, uh, you need to know how they're making meaning. So you need to get them to state their belief in external behavior equals internal state. Um, so usually they'll start either, they'll give you one or the other. It's, they'll say, uh, you know, I'm really upset or they'll say, uh, I can't believe he yelled at me. Uh, and then, and then you can start asking questions. Oh, uh, what's bad about him yelling at you? Or what does that, uh, what does that mean for you? What does that say about you that he yelled at you? Or, uh, you know, how do you know that? How, how do you know that you're a bad person? Um, and you can start asking these questions and then you get a linkage external behavior, link, internal state. And once you have them in that uh, model, you can start playing around with that. You start reframing that 
and you can change the meaning of the whole thing. So how do you do that? How do you actually begin to change the meaning once you have them, the belief stated in external behavior means internal state? So there are actually seven separate directions you can go to reframe the thing. There you could go left, pre-framing. You go right, post-framing. You can stay right where you are. That's reframing. Go down, deframing. And then there's three meta levels you can go to. Uh, Counter-framing, out-framing, and analogy, which is really kind of going up the stack. So I'm going to go over each of those. And uh, yeah, let's let's dive right in. So we're gonna we're gonna keep going with this example of um, yelling, uh, yelling means they're angry at me. Uh, yelling means they're angry at me. Okay. Uh, so so this is a complex equivalence. Uh, they're yelling at me, therefore they are angry. And we're gonna go through each of these directions, starting with staying where we are, which is content reframing. Uh, so in this one, you can either reframe the external behavior or you can reframe the internal state. Uh, so it's not this, it's this. So yelling uh, means they're angry at me. Uh, reframing the IS would be uh, yelling means they care about you. They wouldn't raise their voice like that unless they cared. So yelling means they care about me. Interesting. You can also reframe the internal, uh, the external behavior. Um, uh, it's hard to. Uh, oh, uh, they're not. <laughs> they're not yelling. Uh, you're just far away, and they're trying to be heard. They're not yelling. They're trying to be heard. Okay. So you're either reframing, redefining the the external behavior, or you're redefining the internal state. And again, this uh, you can do multiple of these. You can stack these together. You can get them to deframe and reframe and um, it's kind of an art here to figure out which uh, which direction is going to work for which statements. But uh, I'm going to go through all of them right now. So that's the content reframe. That, again, that's inside the box. See that one in the center? You have the EB means IS. And then right, just reframing that content, either the EB or the IS. Now let's go down to deframing. So deframing is actually deconstruct meaning. Uh, so, so you have this external behavior in this internal state, um, and you can actually <laughs> you can actually chunk both of those down. So, what does yelling actually mean? Well, yelling means uh, they're taking in more air, more air is coming out of their mouth. Uh, once you start to <laughs> to deconstruct what they're actually doing, the meaning can start to break down because uh, you can no longer say EB is IS because EB is many of these different things, and how do you know it goes to IS? So. Uh, you can also do that with the uh, internal state. So, or, or so, so angriness. What do, what do you mean by angriness? Um, well, it means that there's uh, their vision goes red. It means that uh, blood uh, rushes to their veins. You can also do internal state. You know, you're getting upset about this. So, what does upset mean to you? Uh, my breathing starts speeding up. All these other things. And once you chunk down to those things, you can say, oh, well, what other times do your breathing speed up? Does it always mean you're anxious? Uh, you can also detail the strategy sequence. So right now, it's uh, they yell, they are angry. But what actually happens here? So uh, they start raising their voice a little more, and they start raising their voice a little more. Their, their cheeks get red. You have a sequence of steps here. It's not just they yell, that it means they are angry. There's a sequence of steps here that happens every single time. And once you break it down to the sequence, uh, the meaning starts to change because it no longer is X means Y. Uh, it's X, Y, Z, A, B, C, uh, and any <laughs> any of those points can have a different meaning than the original meaning. So that's deframing. It's you're deconstructing meaning by getting the sequence of steps or checking down, getting them to be, be specific about what's the internal state you feel, what's the internal state they feel, what what are the steps in the external behavior, um, and any of those you can then use these other uh, patterns to to reframe or sometimes deframing just makes the meaning dissipate uh, because people realize that the the concept they had in their head the clear concept is actually much more complicated and the the meaning sort of sort of dissipates when they realize that they were simplifying a very complex situation that's deframing okay next we're going to go left which is uh, preframing so this is uh, reframing backwards in time uh, so again, uh, you know, they were yelling at you, uh, they started yelling at you and that means they're angry. 
Well, uh, man, to, to get so worked up, uh, they must really care about you. Or, uh, man, you're, uh, you know, uh, pos that's positive prior, prior intention. Uh, it also could be a positive prior cause. Um, uh, something like, uh, man, that... <laughs> Uh, I can't really think of a positive prior cause, but the point being that you go beforehand, you say, oh man, they, uh, you know, they must have really cared about you to get this worked up. So eventually they were angry, but they cared about you firsthand. And so now that you can create a new meaning, which is that they're, <laughs> uh, they're yelling means they care about you. When you take the positive prior intention, and that's actually the IS, the internal state, uh, you can change the entire meaning of the of the thing. So another example of this would be, um, uh, oh, so uh, another example of this would be like, uh, you know, uh, you're you're so stressed out about this test, you must really want to learn. So. <laughs> Uh, you're, you're reframing this negative thing, the stress, to this positive thing, wanting to learn. Uh, and that, that can change the emotional valence around the thing that they're dealing with. So that's pre-framing. Let's talk about post-framing, which is essentially uh, the same thing. Reframing forwards in time. So there's, there's sort of three things you can do. This. You can do this the immediate outcome. Um, so an example of this would be... Um, Hmm. This angry thing is hard because it's uh, it's their internal state. Let's let's make it my internal state. Uh, when they yell at me, it means I'm a bad person. That's a, a better thing. So the first outcome would be. Uh, so what is it? Uh, if you think of yourself as a bad person, what's gonna be what's gonna be the result of that? Uh, will you be able to calm them down if you're thinking about yourself as a bad person? No. Okay. So that's the first outcome reframe. Do you really want to do that? Uh, and again, you could do it in a positive way too. Uh, you know, do you think uh, them getting angry will help you watch your words in the future? That could be another uh, first outcome reframe. You can do a sequence of outcome reframes. If you consistently think of yourself as a bad person, uh, how do you think that's going to affect your life in the future? And you can even do the eternity frame. If every single, if uh, forever, you always thought of yourself as a bad person, every time somebody did this, uh, would that work for you? Uh, what, what would your life be like? Do you want to maybe think about choosing a more positive frame for your life? And that's uh, adding a little bit of an out frame at the end. But you start out with this sequence of outcomes. You start out with, what, what if you did this forever? What would, be the, uh, what would be the effect of that? Do you want to do that? So that's the post frame, reframing forwards in time. And, and uh, sort of getting people to see the consequences, good or bad, of the meeting that they're making. Okay, uh, let's let's go to the first uh, level up frame. This is one of my favorite reframes, and it's the counter frame. Um, so one of my favorite examples to ask, uh, one of my favorite things to ask is, uh, is there a time when, no. So uh, when they yell at me, uh, it means I'm a bad person. Um, is there any, ever a time when somebody yells at you uh, that it doesn't mean you're a bad person? Well, yeah, you know, my, maybe my coach uh, yelled at me to do well. So it's not true that them yelling at you means you're a bad person, right? So uh, that's one way to do it. The other way could be, um, you know, uh, so I'm talking to you and, and you say, you know, that he yells at me, it means you're a bad person. And I say, uh, I've been yelled at before. Do you think I'm a bad person? That's replying to myself. So a counterframe, an example, or, um, well, I'm going to yell at you right now. Does this make you a bad person? Finding an example where it's not true. So you're finding an example where this meaning does not hold. And it, again, it causes them to either break that meaning or to add nuance to their model, uh, make it a little bit more accurate. So you're, you're deconstructing the meaning by showing that this meaning does not always hold. Uh, and, and again, that question is there ever a time when this meaning doesn't apply? Is there ever a time when X does not imply Y? Is one of my favorite questions to ask uh, when working with people. Uh, and it also helps It also helps with uh, pulling out strategies. So is there ever a time that uh, you, know, you have a lot to do and you haven't been stressed? 
Uh, not only does it does it break that meaning in their mind, but it also gives them strategies. Oh yeah, there was this time and this time and this time. What did you do differently that time? And they can pull out strategies. So that question is one of my favorite counterframing, one of my favorite types of reframes. So that's the first level up. Uh, the second level up would be an outframe. Uh, and the uh, the basic idea here is that you're not at attacking the meaning itself. You're attacking the ontology that creating created the meaning. Uh, so an example here would be saying, uh, oh, uh, so you're saying that uh, when somebody yells at you, it makes uh, that they it means they're angry. Uh, that's a very that's an ontology that's a very uh, it's very uh, almost tautological. X is Y. Uh, but what if you did a a, a Bayesian model where uh, there's probabilities? So yelling at you. Uh, makes a 30% probability that they're meeting. You're totally changing the ontology from X is Y to X has a chance of Y. That would be one example of changing uh, someone's total uh, ontology. Another way, an another thing would be, uh, you know, how's that working out for you? Uh, so again, you're, you're, uh, you're changing the ontology, not X means Y, but uh, how does this belief affect me? So you're getting them to go one level higher, uh, look at the belief structure and its effects and then come back in and, and uh, change it that way. So all you're doing here is, is you're changing the ontology, you're changing the level of abstraction and what they're looking at something. Um, and this is sort of a catch-all. There's a, a bunch of different ways to do this. I recommend you get the, the Mind Lines book if you're really interested in exactly how to do it. Uh, the final one is analogy. So this is sort of the top level. Uh, and this one you're not... <laughs> you're, uh, you're, you're going so high that you're not even dealing with ontology. You're dealing with metaphors and similes and other things. Um, and you're getting them to, uh, you're, you're reframing without even dealing with any of the content at all. Uh, you're just getting them to see the similarities, uh, in your story. Uh, and then, uh, that, that analogy uh, maps to one of those other six reframe directions that we talked about before. Uh, so, you know, uh, once upon a time, there was a son who loved his father, uh, or his father loved, who loved his son. Uh, he loved him so much that he yelled at him day in and day out. Uh, then XYZ happened, and uh, uh, the father and son are closer than ever. Um, and again, you're not dealing directly with this person's meaning, but the story, uh, helps them reframe the meaning of EB or IS or, uh, changes their ontology. And, uh, this is, uh, this is a hard one. This is a really hard one to get good at. Uh, but NLP has mm, some amazing tools for this. Uh, Metaphors of Movement is one that I've covered and I highly recommend checking it out. So that was a pretty long <laughs> Mental Model Monday. But I hope that's useful to you and catch you on the flip side.